When you take the grayscale technology and apply color to its use, you get indexed color. This mode allows you to extend the color palette of your image without greatly increasing the file size. The main perk of index color images is that they give us a small file size, and the reason that they do this is because, first off, they're only capable of displaying 256 colors. Since they only have to display that 256 colors, all of the information that would be contained in a photograph with millions of colors won't be included in the index color image. With this in mind, I'll show you a few steps here of common index color settings. All of these settings are not going to be correct for every project you're doing, but again, remember that the smaller the image, the less color information that we actually need. So if we were to turn this into an index color image inside Photoshop, we go up here to the image menu and select mode, then select indexed color. The first thing to take note of is the palette drop down menu. Click on that and we have a couple of different options here. You'll notice that the exact palette is grayed out. And the reason that is, is because the image that we're starting out with has way more than 256 colors. The only time that you'll be able to change an RGB image into an index color image with the exact palette is if there are 256 or fewer colors in your RGB image. Other than that, you'll have to step to one of the other options before you can step to exact. The next two are system palettes. We have the Mac palette and the Windows palette. Now, each of these do contain 256 colors, but since they were created by two different companies, those 256 colors are slightly different. The next one is web. Web actually only contains 216 colors, and these were originally created for the early days of the internet before modern monitors could display millions and millions of colors. So with this 216 color palette, artists in the early days of computers could then create images that they would know would be able to be displayed on all of the monitors that were available at the time. It's not so important these days because we have LCD screens and really good monitors, but it's still there nonetheless. The uniform palette creates a palette by sampling colors from the same position on the red, the green, and the blue graph. And what that means is this. Let's cancel out of this real quick and let me just show you what that might look like. So if we drag in an RGB cube here to show you what that means. Down the bottom left here we have red, the bottom right we have green, and at the top we have blue. Now, if we blend each of these colors together uh, at the very apex of all three colors, we're going to have pure white because RGB is an additive color model. Uh, if we only take red and blue, we're going to have purple, red and green make yellow, and green and blue make cyan. What the Uniform Palette does, essentially, if it chooses one color from here, which is essentially 0x and 0y on the red axis, it also takes one from 0x and 0y on blue, 0x from 0y from one on green, and then if it takes one from the center on green, it takes one from the center on blue, and it matches that same one in red. Whichever color it chooses on the X and Y red graph here, it'll choose that same color from the green graph and the blue graph. If you don't understand that, that's okay. Basically, just understand that any shade of red that it picks, it'll pick that same shade in both green and blue. All right, so now let's drop down here again and get back to what we were talking about. Uh, perceptual color is a color spectrum that takes into consideration the main colors that your eye can detect and it will create a palette using those colors as they apply to your image. Selective color combines web colors with the colors that are used in large portions of the image. For example, up on the right hand side, we can see there's a lot of ocean there, a lot of blue, so it would combine the web colors with those blue colors. Adaptive takes all the colors that appear in the image and makes a palette out of the ones that appear most often in the image. So in this particular image, we would see a lot of oranges and yellows and a lot of blues. Most of the other colors would fall by the wayside. For instance, the guy sitting off to the left there, you can see some red. That will probably drop off once we change this over just because there are more blues, yellows, and greens in the image than that red. If we look down here to the custom palette, we can actually define a palette using whatever colors we like. Simply by clicking in here, we can turn the entire thing purple if you want. Anyway, those are your basic options. The next one is colors. And your four most often used color options are going to be 4, 16, and then of course 256. 
So we're gonna use, for this example, I'm just gonna use 256 and hit OK. Now one of the downsides of using an index color image is if you come up here to the filters menu, none of our filters are available to us because similar to the bitmap images, we have a finite amount of color here. So if we were to start blurring this, obviously here it's not going to allow us. If I change this back to RGB mode, and if I start blurring this, you're going to see some of these colors blended together. Well, the index color palette doesn't have the new colors that are created by blending each of these colors together, so it won't give us the filter option. The final thought to keep in mind, as I was saying, is that when you're using index color, make sure you take into account what you're actually doing. For example, if we're just using a four color image, obviously something like this isn't going to give us the quality we want at this resolution, whereas if this image were say this big, maybe it would give us the quality that we need. But again, you can see it still doesn't hold up. This image is far too rich. Four color is basically for very simple images, logos, or a simple illustration. 16 color is a little bit better, but again, you can see that as we zoom out, it actually doesn't, doesn't look that bad. Jump into the 256 color image, and obviously this holds up a lot better at higher resolutions because there's more color information to draw from. Here are the four images all side by side, the 416, 256, and then the full color image. And again, as you can see, the 256 color image actually does a pretty good job of replicating the full color image at this smaller size. We zoom in, it may not hold up as well, but if you're putting something on the internet, it may not be a bad option to consider. Well, that's all for the next color mode. If you have any questions, please send them to requests at mahalo.com, and please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.